Hello crochet friends, welcome to Crazy Cool Crochet. This is Sylvia and we are going to be making this adorable, really comfortable crochet bat wing sweater. So I'm going to jump right into the materials and I'm using Yarn Bee Soft Secret in sky blue this is a number four and the reason I'm going with this particular yarn is because it drapes beautifully and that's really important if you do want to substitute yarns which absolutely you can do that but you need to be careful that it's not a stiff hard number four you want it to be able to drape nicely and softly I will, however, knowing that not everybody has access to this yarn, leave a link below the video in the white space where you have to open up manually. Figure out how to open that up. And I will leave a link to a comparable yarn that you can buy online and that's available then to a lot more people. So in addition to the yarn, we'll need scissors, the yarn needle, and the crochet hook will be the G or 4.25 millimeter. You might also, this is optional, use a smaller hook for the cuff, for the ribbing on the cuff, because you might prefer a tighter stitch for that, but that's entirely optional. Also regarding the hooks, if you happen to use a tight tension typically, you might want to switch up to the next size larger hook, because the stitch that we'll be using, and I'll show you that in a second, you don't want it to be too tight. You're not necessarily going to crochet loosely, but you definitely don't want to go tight with this one. So one last thing before I show you one of the panels. This will be for a size small. For instructions on larger sizes, I will leave a link again down in that white space below the video, or you can go to crazycoolcrochet.com that's my blog where I leave the written instructions there will also be a link below to my Etsy shop if you want the printable and here is one of the panels we do make two identical panels and it's not all fitting on the table this is the bottom and obviously you can see how this expands out on each side And yes, this yarn does curl up a little bit as you're working, but that will all even out once we seam the edges. And then when we get to a certain point, we start working straight up, and that will be the holes for your wrist to come through. And then we will add the, the ribbed cuffs. So what I wanted to show you is the stitch. Single crochet. The entire project will be single crochet. It sounds horribly boring, but let me explain myself. Um, I'm using a straight single crochet here because this is one of those designs, and I do this uh, now and again, where I want the style or the design, the shape, the silhouette to be the focus not the stitch and that's the exact situation here I wanted this to be very sleek with a nice smooth as flat as possible weave and so that is achieved with the single crochet stitch the good news is that helps the entire project go so much faster it's so easy now this is where I'm saying if you tend to crochet with a tight tension, you might want to either loosen it up a little bit, just a little, or go to the next size hook. Because this weave is already closed up, we don't want it to be too tight because then we lose some of the draping. And we really want this to drape softly and nicely. So just keep that in mind. We are going to start with a chain of 71. For size small. Chain 
Now I'm going to be just working from a swatch here rather than do the entire length of the panel. I'm just going to show you, because this is such an easy pattern, uh, I'll show you the stitches. So what we will do is start with the row of all single crochets, but for this row only we are going to be working in the back loop. This row only, and this is so that we have a self-made border, so we don't have to go back and put on a border at the end. Okay, so skip that very first stitch, and then into the next one. Go into that back loop for a regular single crochet. If you turn this over just a little bit, you'll see all those little loops popping out in the back. That's where you're working. There's the front of the chain. And there's the back. So you will do your single crochets in every chain all the way to the end and then you will end up with 70 single crochets. Now don't forget for sizing information go down below the white space open up that description area and I'll have more information on sizing there. Okay, so now at the end of the row chain one and turn. Now this is going to be your repeat row all the way through row 41. So in the first space and in the last space, which I'll show you in a minute, we enter two single crochets. Okay, so it's two single crochets into that very first space. And then one single crochet in each space across until you get to the last one. Okay, there's your last space. There's the two strands that indicate that's still a stitch there. Okay, so in that last space you're going to enter two single crochets. And this is how we are going to be increasing all the way along the edge on both sides. So chain one, turn. So now again, in that very first space, two single crochets for another increase. And then a single crochet in each space across. And you're simply working into the space under that two strand chain. There's your last stitch, your last space. So you enter two single crochets. Chain one, turn and repeat. How easy is that? So again, keep working until you complete 41 rows. Okay, we are going to pretend that this is row 41 because I want to show you what we do for row 42 and the remainder of the panel. We work in one count of single crochet in each space. At that point for row 42 you will be at 150 single crochets for size small. Okay, so on row 42 you enter one single crochet in that first space, and one single crochet in each space across. And then in the last space, only one single crochet. And then you chain one and turn. So for row 41, it will be 150 single crochets. Row 42, 150 single crochets. Row 43, the same, 150. You are going to stay at that count. So you're only entering one single crochet at the beginning and one at the end. So you will have continued working in the 150 stitches through row 65. So your entire panel will be 65 rows long. And that's it. Then you can cut off the yarn, leave a tail to weave in at the end, and then make another panel exactly the same. How easy is this? Sometimes, folks, it is the easiest designs that result in the most beautiful crochet wearable. I wanted to give you a little tip here regarding counting the rows. 
So for this particular pattern especially, it is easier to count in twos because here is your first row and the second row you can see how the stitch pops out. So you can see how these rows all pop out. Okay, so you've got row one, two, three is squeezed in there, four, five is squeezed in there, six. So rather than counting one by one, it's so much easier just to go two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, and so on. Just my little tip of the day. Now we are going to take our two panels and lay them one on top of the other, and we're going to seam at the shoulder and down the sleeve. So make sure that you've got right sides together, wrong sides are up. And here is the right side. This is the tail from the foundation chain. So this is the right side. So now determine the width that you want for the neck opening. I'm going with nine inches here. And then I just put a little stitch marker on each end. It's just contrasting pieces of yarn. So now we're going to take our yarn needle with the length of yarn, start at the corner. So this is the top of the sleeve of the sleeve. Going up to the shoulder. And there's your neckline. Okay, so I like to tie my ends together. And then I'm just using a simple whip stitch. So just bring the needle through two chains that form at the top on each panel. Get those stragglers out of the way. And then just go back around again. So under the two strands on each panel, and bring it through. And that's all you do. So just do this all the way till you get to your stitch marker. And then you will bring the yarn under a couple stitches and tie it off when you get to your neckline. Now we are going to seam the edge. So there's the bottom. And of course we still have wrong sides up. And then you seam all the way up to the armhole opening. So I'm just using these yarn needles as little markers just to show where we start and where we end. And use the same whip stitch. Now we are going to work on the cuff and this time we want the top right side up. So this is the right side now. There's the armhole, over there's the neck or the shoulder. And I am going to go with a little bit smaller hook. This is an F or a 3.75 millimeter, and it's entirely up to you. Totally optional. I happen to like the look of it, a tighter ribbed cuff. And this is going to be a longer one, approximately seven, seven and a half inches long. So all you do is insert the hook in the bottom by the seam, grab your yarn, do a slip stitch or a chain, I should say, to lock it in. Now we are going to be working in slip stitches. And what we are trying to do, first of all, is to tighten this up so it's not so wide. So this is going along the forearm and the wrist, so it needs to be a smaller opening. So all we're going to do is slip stitch into approximately every other space. As we're going along, we'll see how tight it's getting. Okay, so skip a space there, slip stitch into the next one, skip a space, slip stitch, and just keep doing that around. Now we're back to where we started. 
and we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch of the row and that worked out fairly well that's a good size opening it's going to still tighten up a little bit more as we're working the ribbing now we're going to chain 33 and we will single crochet into the second chain from the hook don't count the loop on the hook so there's the second one just a regular single crochet in each chain now we're going to enter the last single crochet in that last chain now we're going to what I'm going to call the home row. Okay, so over here where we did our slip stitches to tighten up the opening. So now we're going to slip stitch into this first space, roughly. It's a little bit hard to tell. Okay, now bring that row of single crochets toward you. Now we're going to be working in the back loop only from here on. Okay, so go into the back loop of the first single crochet and do a single crochet. And do that in each single crochet across. So we're working in the back loops and that's what's going to create the ribbing. Continue that to the end. When you enter your last single crochet, chain one and turn, and then repeat that. So you're working in the back loop only, all the way down the line here. Okay, now we enter our last single crochet, and again we meet back over on the home row and we're going to slip stitch into this next stitch here. So here's where we entered the last one. So here's the next stitch, slip stitch. Turn your rows around and repeat. Work in the back loop chain one turn, come back, work in the back loop, and then slip stitch into the home row. Now, this is where I want you to use your discretion. As you are working around, be looking at the opening. If it looks like it's too wide, then go ahead and skip a stitch when you're doing your slip stitch in the home row. Don't do that too often because you don't want it to get too skinny. So keep an eye on this as you're working around. If it's getting a little too tight, then only go into every space without skipping. Again, you decide what's gonna work best for you. Now when you come back around to where you started, make sure that you end up on the home row. And go ahead and do your last slip stitch. Now we're going to seam the edge, but we need to turn this inside out. Just remember you've been working on the right side, so now we need to flip this around. Of course you have to be careful you didn't lose your loop. And now all you're going to do is slip stitch along the edge. Now here's a little trick. I like to go into the back loop. Okay, so here you've got your chain. And here's, well, I don't know if it's the front or the back, but this one here, the one closest to you. And then 
on the other side it's not so easy because that's another kind of a chain but try to get into the back loop of that chain and do your slip stitch now the reason for that is so that when you flip it back around it looks like you've got the ridge continuing okay so that's not mandatory it's just a little trick so just do this all the way down and then you are done okay so when you come over here tie it off leave a little tail weave it up into here and I usually do a knot just for more security and that's it folks and there she is all done so be sure to let me know in the comments below what you think of this now on the table it looks really short it's supposed to be really short go over to the blog crazycoolcrochet.com for the sizing information so if you want to make it longer you absolutely can and of course it looks a little funky here because it's supposed to be super wide for the bat wing silhouette right there I love the sleeves I love the little poofiness and the long cuffs the simplicity of it and keep in mind once you put this on it does stretch a little bit so the weight of the yarn which is not heavy it's just stretchy so it will give you a little bit more length after you put it on make sure you come back for the next project and thank you so much for your support comments watching videos all the way through subscribing all of this is super super helpful and i appreciate you guys so much thank you